Now at six. The Josephinum is proposing changes as 10 Investigates exposes how an alleged sexual predator was able to get inside a Columbus seminary. Josephinum in Columbus is one of the nation's most prestigious Catholic seminaries and is the only one only seminary that reports directly to the Vatican. 10 Investigates Nathan Baca is back in the studio now to show how our questions are bringing change and transparency to the school's policies. Nathan. Now, when police arrested former seminarian Joel Wright and accused him of trying to buy toddlers for sex, we went beyond just asking what happened. 10 Investigates uncovered how an accused sexual predator gets inside a seminary and what's been done to stop that in the future. We asked those questions and got answers. And just today, church leaders announced sweeping changes at the Josephinum. Pontifical College Josephinum. Even its name separates it from the busy outside world. Surrounded by nearly 100 acres, the Josephinum allows its seminarians to study Catholicism in silence and isolation. Within this serene beauty, a man federal investigators say is a sexual predator plotted his crimes. How did Joel Wright, a man who reportedly advertised for children, make it through the selection process for the Vatican-controlled seminary, and could it happen again? Our story starts with Joel Wright beginning his religious training. Wright went to Thomas More College south of Cincinnati. Multiple people on campus tell 10 investigates Wright often wore a priest's collar and served as a student chaplain. Federal documents reveal Wright was about to start a second Christian college in the summer of 2014 when he went to Tijuana to have sex with children. The documents also reveal how an informant who initially said he would help Wright later refused. Wright left Mexico unsuccessful in his efforts. The informant is now cooperating with Homeland Security investigators, and he spoke to 10TV. He told me straight out he wanted to, to have sex with a baby, you know, not even older than two years, he said. I said, what? Wright then went to Franciscan University for two semesters in Steubenville before formally applying to that diocese in the summer of 2015. By that time, his mother said Wright had been rejected by about 45 seminaries. A spokeswoman for the Steubenville Diocese said the application asked if applicants have been involved with other dioceses. But the spokeswoman added Wright's application made no mention of his other seminary rejections, let alone 45. On May 5th, a woman contacted Steubenville police to report a questionable Craigslist post by Joel Wright. It allegedly offered parents $150 to watch their children. The report was filed, but the diocese said they never knew. Those reports are not included on a criminal background check because there was no arrest nor conviction. The diocese doesn't look into students' background any further than that basic records check. Church officials say they take candidates at their word. Back to that Craigslist ad. Shockingly, it was out around the same time the diocese had Wright take a psychological exam. The exam did not set off any red flags. Steubenville Bishop Jeffrey Monfortin signed off on Joel Wright's admission to the Josephinum. At first, his spokeswoman declined an on-camera interview, so we found the bishop and asked him to explain Joel Wright's admission. Probably not a good idea. My attorney said it's probably best we don't say anything right now. But, but then Steubenville's like bishop began talking. Did you get a chance to meet Joel Wright? Oh, yes. And what were your impressions or thoughts about him? There's potential, but at first impressions, as we know, can be wrong. And it's very disappointing. It really broke my heart. And I appreciate you also taking a look into it and reviewing it. Um, we have to be transparent. One thing that could have stopped Wright was a phone call that came into the Josephinum. Remember that informant who was working with Homeland Security? He says he contacted the Josephinum in the fall of 2015 and wanted to warn them about Wright. Father John Allen confirms receiving the call and put him on hold. Allen claims the informant hung up and never called again. The informant says his follow-up email was ignored. We sat down with Father John Allen inside the Josephinum. That wouldn't be appropriate for me to speak about any of those conversations. Okay. Right. But if I may, you did at uh, least... I, 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 I may not, I, I don't wish to speak about any of those conversations. As you know, uh, the, the, the matters of his inquiry regarding Mr. Wright are under federal investigation and it's not appropriate for me to speak about any of those. 
10 investigates reached out to members of the Josephinum's Board of Trustees to get answers. The Board of Trustees will now decide on sweeping new changes in how seminarians are admitted. The proposals came from the Josephinum's leading priests, including Allen and Monsignor Christopher Schreck. In light of what has happened, what is changing at the Josephinum? In the world in which we live, it's vital for us to have uh, every possible uh, means at our disposal uh, in, when it comes to the acceptance and formation of seminarians. Therefore, uh, we're taking leadership in uh, a national initiative to establish a database. A national database would list seminary rejections, which had it existed means Joel Wright would have never been of the Josephinum. Never, never. The National Registry of Seminary Applications is not the only proposed change to prevent another Joel Wright of the Josephinum. Former FBI investigators will now do a more thorough background check, uncovering criminal complaints and a student's online history, not just convictions. And all incoming students will now have to meet with a school psychologist in person before acceptance. Acceptances for the fall class this year will be provisional until all those new steps are added. Since yesterday afternoon, our series Sins of the System revealed how easy it is for the troubled men to enter the Josephinum Seminary. The seminary now pledges action, but we examine whether it's enough. There is no place in the Josephinum, and there never has been, for any person who would display even the slightest sign or indication of posing a threat to the innocent, to the young, to the vulnerable, or to children. But there was a place for Joel Ryan at the Josephinum for months before his arrest in San Diego for allegedly trying to buy Mexican toddlers for sex. The Josephinum now pledges sweeping changes in how they verify the background of their incoming students. But one thing missing from the Josephinum's changes anybody outside the Catholic Church reviewing how the seminary does its screenings. This is what Father Allen considers independent review. Well, the Bishop's uh, Committee of the United States maintains its own legal department who further advises the conference and at times individual bishops on uh, their, their, their compliance. Former Benedictine monk and sexual abuse researcher Richard Seip says Josephinum's leading priests must lead the way to protect against sexual predators. But as they get into the system, then how does a, a teacher, how does a, a, a spiritual advisor, uh, when a student comes to him and says, look, I'm having this struggle, I'm having this struggle with sexuality, with these thoughts, with these desires, or with these actions, uh, how does he then handle that? SNAP, a support group for victims of priestly sexual abuse, commented, Wright was a seminarian, not a prospective seminarian, when he tried to buy kids to abuse. That strongly suggests that the Josephina must look more closely right now at the seminarians they already have, not just pledge to do better screening in the future. Nathan Baca, 10 Investigates. Columbus Seminary leaders pledge change through this year after the arrest of Joel Wright. Take a look at our conversations with representatives of the Josephino. We're taking leadership in uh, a national initiative to establish a database. We're taking the Josephinum's admissions process to a higher level. But why has it taken so long? The, the, it's, uh, it's just a matter of uh, the, the letter was prepared last week, and I, I generated support for the letter, of course, in right. advance. But even after their right was convict, Joel Wright was convicted of attempted child sex crimes, we've uncovered broken promises and a lack of action from seminary leaders. 10 Investigates Nathan Baca is holding those Catholic leaders accountable. Families trust Pontifical College Josephinum to train the next generation of Catholic priests. But after we revealed just how they allowed a sexual predator inside these halls, the seminary refuses to reveal what they're doing to prevent this from happening again. Joel Wright. Dozens of seminary applications and rejections around the country. Did the Pontifical College even look? A simple background check 10 investigates did spotted a past Steubenville police investigation. And if the Josephinum simply secured their internet, they may have prevented Wright from going online trying to buy children in Mexico to rape. But as we showed this March, the Josephinum did none of that. They don't care. They, they just 
don't care. Judy Jones is a leader of the Survivors Network of those abused by priests. They could do something about it, they just won't. They, the, the Catholic bishops tend to do as little as possible. The Josephinum says they pushed for a national database that would track seminary rejections. But 10 investigates received this statement from the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. Due to the limitations upon which Episcopal conferences are founded, it is not possible for the USCCB to assume the responsibility for establishing and administering a comprehensive national database of applicants to priestly formation. In short, any national database tracking seminary applicants is not happening. So we tried to get answers from the Josephinum. We emailed their employees and board members eight times this past month and did not hear anything back. And Josephinum employees called police on us twice when we tried to get answers from seminary leaders outside their campus. In the past, the Josephinum said they would take action on their own to run background checks on applicants and secure their internet. Ten investigates cannot verify if they do or don't. But the bishops are essentially turning their backs. Former Benedictine monk Richard Sipe was an informant in the Boston Globe's Spotlight investigation. Any real movement on their part would leave them vulnerable to their own exposure. 10 Investigates will continue to press for answers from seminary leaders. Reporting from Pontifical College Josephinum, Nathan Baca, 10 Investigates.